In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dear faithful, if you purchase a crunchy peanut butter cliff bar, you will find on the cliff bar a, an image of the tennis player Venus Williams and a certain quotation from Venus. And this quotation reads as follows. When I was growing up, my mom was into healthy eating. So instead of sweets, our family would reach for something nutritious, like an apple. As a professional athlete, I'm even more conscious of what I put into my body today. Venus Williams is very conscious of what she puts into her body because she wants to take care of her body. She wants to do this for a certain purpose so that she might be a good athlete. Athletes who have a better body are able to do better in their sport. Now, there's two things here that the Venus is teaching us, which I would like to use to then make an application to the parable that our Lord tells us in today's gospel. First thing that Venus is recognizing is is that what she decides to feed herself has an impact on how her body is. Um, She is the cause of what happens in her body. If, If she feeds herself good food, then her body will be healthy. If she feeds herself bad food, then it's going to be bad for her body. The second thing that Venus recognizes is that her body is a means for her to achieve a goal, that she needs to eat correctly in order that her body may be good in good shape so that then when she goes to play the tennis match, she may be more certain of achieving the victory. Her body will do what she wants her body to do. Okay, so that's the perspective of, of Venus and what her, her insight, and we need to apply this to the parable of today's gospel. What our Lord is teaching us in today's parable is that we should use the cleverness and the willpower of the world, such as we see exhibited in Venus William, and apply it to our goal of pursuing heaven. Just like Venus, you are in charge of your body, and even more so, of your soul. You are a steward. You were created by God, your Father. He put you on this earth. He gave you an immortal soul. He gave you a body. These are certain goods. They come from Him. They don't come from you. They're conferred upon you by your Creator in heaven. You're by your Father in heaven. He gives them to you to be the steward of those things. And then you go and you make decisions about what you're going to do with your soul and your body, how you're going to use your soul and your body. And, you know, how people in the world, they, they often take the great goods that, that God has given them, these most precious possessions that you have. There should be no things more precious to you than your immortal soul in your body. And they take these, these precious possessions and they do not use them for the purpose for which God gave them, for them to attain heaven, for them to save their souls, but rather they use them for other purposes. They use them for, in the instance, purposes of acquiring fame and glory through sports and entertainment, or they uh, use them for the purpose of making money, becoming rich, or they use them for the purpose of acquiring certain material possessions. They, they use all the powers of their mind and, and the powers of the effort of their body in order to get stuff, purchase stuff. And when they do this, they're, they're not being good stewards of what God has given them. And one day, they're going to die and they're going to be, appear before our Lord and our Lord is going to say, give an account of your stewardship. I gave you your life I gave you your soul. I gave you your body. What did you do with them? How did you use them? What did you strive to accomplish with your body and your soul? He will, if he were evaluating them on things like, well, how how well did you use your body and your soul to entertain yourself, or how well did you use your body and soul to make money? Then they would get a good score. They would get a good grade. He would be able to say to them, well done. You did a great job with your life of 
of achieving and using your body and soul for for the purpose for these purposes he would give them a good score but if in fact they have pursued worldly goods then he's not going to to praise them he's not going to praise them we may be a little confused with this parable today because our lord seems to praise behavior that is wrong. The steward is uh, being deceitful towards his master. Our Lord is not praising the deed of being evil, of cheating his master. What he's praising is the effort that the steward puts in to taking care of himself, of achieving his own goals. And this is what we want to do today in regards to someone like Venus Williams. We should admire Venus Williams, not because she's wholly, clearly focused on becoming a tennis champion and that she's made that the purpose of her life, Um, but because of the great effort which she invests in accomplishing her goal. If we only made a similar effort for accomplishing the purpose for which we were created, then we would get that same praise of our Lord. So, You have to be very aware that God has appointed you to be the steward of your body and soul. He has given you a free will, and so you have the ability to make decisions. So what happens with your soul and your body? And then you have to make sure that you use them in such a way in this life that you make it to heaven, that you make the right decisions in the way you handle your mind your will, your body, such that you take them, you accomplish the goal of of leading them to heaven. To do this, you have to be just as careful as to what you put into your soul as Venus Williams is as to what she puts into her body. She's willing to make the effort to be very, very careful about what she eats so that she can be an athlete and a great performer at Wimbledon, you have to make this effort in order to be a son of God and heirs with Christ, as St. Paul says in the epistle to the What do you put in your mind? What decisions do you make with your will? These are the big questions that you have to ask yourself. Are the things that you're choosing to put into your mind, are the decisions that you're making with your will, what are they accomplishing in your life? You are the one who decides, well, what books you will read, what news articles you will read on the internet. You are the one who decides what music you will listen to, what sounds are going going into your ears, what sort of lyrics that are going into your ears, what sort of songs you are singing. You you decide what podcasts you will put on, whose opinions you listen to on a day-to-day basis. You decide what movies you watch, what sort of television shows you watch, how much time you spend looking at sports scores or, or watching basketball and baseball games. You decide how many YouTube videos or TikTok videos you watch each day or or each week. These are all things that you're feeding your soul. They're hitting your soul. They're making impressions on your soul. Some sort of impact. And your soul reacts in a certain way. Every single one of those decisions that you make hits your soul with impressions or thoughts or sensations. And each of them either lifts up your soul towards heaven or drags it down, drags your soul down. I think we all recognize that we are, we are the ultimate gatekeepers of our soul. It's true that sometimes there's things we come into contact with we can't avoid. The vast majority of the time, I am the gatekeeper of my own soul. And I decide what it gets fed. And I either become holier or I become more worldly, depending on what what I'm giving to it. I become more spiritual or I contaminate myself 
you know how you feel when when you eat junk food, or you eat a lot of junk food, or or worse, you eat food that is contaminated. You get you get food poisoning. You go home. And you're just like, I just thought my there's something wrong with my stomach. I don't feel right. And he's like, you go down, you go you go to to bed, and you lie down. You're like, oh, this is horrible. This, my stomach doesn't feel good. And you you, you are very acutely aware of of the sickness that you've developed. And, and unfortunately, we're often not that sensitive with regards to the sensations in our own soul. There's, there's an equivalent with our own soul. There's a certain sickness that invades our own soul, depending on what we feed it. What one of us has, has not walked away for some sort, from some sort of worldly television program or, or movie and felt sick to our soul, to our soul, sick in our soul. We, the, the, the women were very sensual. The conversation was, was vulgar. The humor was, was very cheap. The people were acting in a way, perhaps it was, it was funny, but at the same time, it was shameful. We walk away in our, our soul, just kind of sick. Um, our Catholic sensibilities have been injured and we feel our soul groaning under the impact of this debasing of ourselves that we just went through. And it's a pain. There's a pain there. It's not, it's not as immediate. It's not as acute as the stomach pain, but there is a pain there. You felt it. I felt it. And it's, at the same time, somehow pleasurable. It's a pain in our soul, but there's a certain pleasure in our lower nature. And this is where the difficulty comes. This is perhaps why we do not react in the same way where we have a pain in our stomach and when we have a pain in our soul. While our soul's in pain, our lower nature is being flattered and delighted. So many times we may just ignore what's going on in our soul. We'll take the pain in the soul so that we can continue the delight in our lower nature. We're willing for our soul to be damaged because we're not so interested in taking care of it as in flattering our lower nature. What about on the other hand, if you're feeding your soul things that are very good for your soul, that elevate your soul, that ennoble you? What about when you read a good spiritual book uh, like the life of a scene or a treatise on virtue, what happens then within your soul? You have this sentiment of of inspiration. You you feel like you're you're caught up to higher things. You're inspired. You want to do admirable and difficult things. When when you read a good book, you you say, "I should do this act of charity." towards this person who's wronged me. I'm going to forgive them for what they've done to me. You want to perhaps approach someone who's been giving you the cold shoulder. This person is not being nice to me. I'm going to be nice to them. Or you are willing to go back to a duty that you're obliged to do, but you, which you found burdensome. It's like, oh, I really don't want to do that. Then you read this spiritual book and you're like, no, that's okay. I will do that. I will have, you find the strength. Your soul is now suddenly stronger and capable of doing duties that are distasteful to you. What happens when you come to Mass, when you come to this beautiful Mass, this wonderful Mass that we're given as Catholics, this traditional Mass? What happens in your soul? You feel like you're in a different world. You find yourself in a different place, just like you step out of the world and into a different realm where your soul, as it were, is isolated from your body and is given this pure and substantial nourishment that, that we were given through this Catholic liturgy. You, you come up to the communion rail and you receive our Lord in Holy Communion. You close your eyes, you receive our Lord in Holy Communion. Or, or you sing along with the Gregorian chant or you adore our Lord at the consecration 
and not even aware that you have a body, your, your soul is lifted up to heavenly things beyond the things of the earth. You're not thinking of the things of the earth anymore. You're ennobled. You feel close to God. You feel like you belong more to heaven than to earth. It's, in short, you, you do what, what is said in the communion verse for today's Mass. You taste and see that the Lord is sweet. God somehow draws you close to him, and in tasting him, you have much less a taste for this world. So my dear faithful, what, what do you feed your soul? On a daily basis, what kind of nourishment do you give to your soul? What do you view on your phone? What do you view on your television? What are you listening to on a regular basis? What are you reading? What impact are these things having on your soul? Even, especially your, your idle time. What do you do with your idle time? Are you making good choices? Are you making good choices about what you feed your soul? Good choices for your mind, good choices for your will. Are you a good steward of this most precious possession that God has given you, of your immortal soul? You really have to have a great desire to attain the goal of heaven and therefore a willingness to to make some difficult choices. Sometimes it's difficult choices. We have to say, that's not for me. I'm not going to do that. Or on the positive side, I'm going to take out time. I'm going to take out time that I could have used for my own pleasure and entertainment and I'm going to read a book that I know will inspire me and it will be good for my soul. For you to invest time in taking care of your own soul. You have so many means as Catholics, so many beautiful means to nourish ourselves, to strengthen ourselves, to ennoble ourselves, and somehow we're much more attracted with junk food for our soul. There's so much junk food out there, and it's so empty. We do just do our doom scrolling. We're just like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling forever on our YouTube feed or, or whatever, and our soul is left empty when it could have, in that time, been strengthened and nourished with substantial food. So it's, it's unjust to God. It's unjust to God. If he created your soul out of nothing, and you take that soul and then you trash it, you waste it, you don't use it for the noble purpose for which it's created. And it's unjust to yourself. It's not fair to yourself. You're not being good to yourself if you do that. Meanwhile, if you take care of that most valuable possession, if you take good and intensive care of your soul, what will be given to you? You will be an heir with Christ. You will be an heir to that eternal and heavenly glory that is primarily in the soul. That's that our Lord earned. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.